fico por aqui. cara. Come em Sergi. Lê, Sergi. Eu sou lindo, eu sou Sergi. Tem que ser o longo, o que é que é Sergi? Ver o arrasto de suca. Today on Grantham, we're going to be talking. Today on Grantham, we're going to be talking about the RPD. Um, the RPD for me is a serious love affair because it falls into being among the first, kind of like the precursor for all LMGs. And a lot of people get mad about that, but a lot of features that you see on most modern LMGs kind of came from the RPD, and certainly the RPD did borrow a lot from other designs but there's a lot to be said about this particular design and the things that it did for weapons as a whole. So today Are on Grantham- saying that because RPD is in the room? Is she safe? So today on Grantham, we're gonna be talking about the RPD. We're super excited. Um, this is one of my favorite weapons just overall um, because uh, I love Fallout 3. Was it in Fallout 3? Yeah, it's the uh, Chinese assault rifle. Are you serious right now? You game more than I do. <laughs> Is it really? How do you not know this? Oh, all right. Well, it was a little different, but pretty much. Today on Grand Thumb. Stay tuned. Now, before we get into that, we of course have to thank the biggest sponsor of this channel. And the biggest sponsor of this channel is the Sonoran. Charlie messes me up every time. The Sonoran Desert Institute SDI. We have to thank them. If you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing, maybe to make something like this right here, you can go and learn all those critical skills um, and barter your way to fame, fame, Success. and and fortune. Women, maybe, maybe in Minecraft. But so big thank you to them. Big thank you to SDI. Of course, sponsor for today's video is Primary Arms. Great optics, great price. We can't thank them enough. Thank you, Primary Arms. You guys rock so much we love you ladies and gentlemen my often forgotten but most certainly not by me mg42s i haven't forgotten you even though many have today we're talking about the rpd so to be clear the rpd is a long very long stroke gas piston system and it is open bolt it is fed from belts of course those belts fit into drums this is in many ways kind of what a lot of people took their design cues from. And the best way to really describe how that all works together is to actually get out in the range right now and shoot it and walk you through the actual um, you know, parts of getting this set up and ready to fire. And it will just make a lot more sense. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get out into the range and we're gonna talk about this as we set this up to fire. So uh, come and join us for a, a day on the range. So we have the RPD right here. A big thank you to Wade's Gun Shop. Very cool, thank you Wade's Gun Shop. You guys are awesome. Now, taking a look at this, uh, the first thing we need to talk about is, is it does have a 20 inch plus barrel. So when we're talking about velocity coming out of the 7.62 by 39, um, we're talking about the most amount of velocity that you can get. That being said, that round is so low pressure that really you can get this thing much shorter and still get those good velocities. So a lot of people, and you see it in the Rhodesian conflicts and elsewhere, will chop these RPDs down to super short and you're still getting excellent velocity. So I would say the chopped RPD of all RPDs builds out there is probably one of the most iconic and how would you say it, Micah, just vibe. 
Yeah. It is such a vibe. We'll pop up a couple of photos here of uh, different guys in Africa with chopped RPDs, but it is 100% the way to go. And I have They're a- Trendsetters. Trendsetters, yeah, they have trendsetters as a bee tries to sting me. Obviously the barrel is well made, it is chrome lined to ensure that it's gonna operate in all those weird conditions. The Russians are pretty good about making stuff to operate in every single condition. Now, one of the best parts about it is going to be the bipod right here. So if we unlock this guy right here, um, it's fairly lightweight, it's a simple design to use, and uh, it rotates around. It's a good design, it's simple, and you see this in most um, LMGs that are made nowadays, so again, uh, this isn't the first weapon to do it, but it's the first weapon to incorporate a lot of these different features. The front sights right here are both elevation and windage adjustable. And then we have the rear sight, which is, of course, elevation adjustable all the way from 100 all the way to 1,000. And uh, it's certainly capable of it. Now, we have the long stroke gas piston system. Again, you can see it right there, just like a AK. A lot of people would call it an upside down AK, which kind of. But... Uh, you know, one thing to remember is that this is long stroke and uh, you never want to short stroke it. So that's a quick note for you for life. One of the most iconic things about the RPD is 100% the handguard. Uh, it just, it has a look to it, man. Uh, that's something that didn't really catch on uh, because you're not really grabbing onto the handguard. You probably need to carry handle more, but it, it was 100% a vibe. Now, the problem with the RPD was that it does not have a quick change barrel. Uh, you wonder why that is necessary if you're not uh, if you haven't fired a lot of LMGs. Well, they get super super hot because they are they are a base of fire. They are supportive fire, so you're putting a lot of rounds through these things. And to be clear, the Soviets and maybe the uh, different African nations that currently use the RPD are still training their guys to fire in short bursts. But it is one of the limiting factors when it comes to the RPD. And this is something that you did not see that carried over into most modern weapon systems. Now from here, we have our belts. They are of different lengths, different uh, amounts of rounds on them, and they are non-disintegrating. Now what they will do is they are in sections uh, between 25 and 50. So if we take a look at the drums right here, and again, this can work off belts or it can work off the drums. So again, the drums are nothing special. They simply house the rounds, the links. So you typically have two sections in here. And of course, on this particular one, we do have a pull tab right there, and then we have the section that actually locks onto the weapon. Now, once you have this coiled up and nice and loaded, close it up, give that little click to make sure it's in place. Now, as far as the loading procedure, um, if you're familiar with the saw or many other LMGs, um, it will be, again, familiar and yet not familiar. It's a little bit more frustrating than newer designs, but again, for the time, not bad. So we get this first lip lined up, and then you simply slide it on. Now, and once we have it guided onto that first lip, you can kind of rotate it up, and then the opposite side will allow you to lock it onto place. Now, it's not locked yet, and then we have this lock right here. So if you're not done yet, you have to rotate that down to ensure that that drum is not going to come off. Compared to the M249 or many other LMGs, it's obviously more of a pain to get that on there. Uh, but you have to realize they didn't have uh, a lot of the foresight that we have right now. So good for the time for sure. Now, if we come over to the side right here of the drum, we can see that on this case, for this particular belt, we do have a starter a tab. So this is something that you see in many weapons nowadays. And again, this isn't the first weapon to do it, but uh, it's something that the RPD incorporated and it's something that certainly caught on. Now, when we talk about rugged reliability, we have to talk about simplicity. The RPD is in every way a very simplistic and very simple weapon. Uh, that's very much so uh, kind of the Soviet way of doing things back in the day, or actually still, we, we, we still, by Soviet we mean Russia. In any case, the when you actually look at the action itself, you can see it, and when we show the high speed right here, it's not too hot, um, it's just an open bolt with, with a ghost switch and there's really not a whole else a lot to it. There's, a, there's hammers on it. The uh, action spring, of course, comes back into the butt sock right there. It's a fairly soft firing weapon considering its fire rate of about 750 or so. Now with the RPD, it does have a tendency to kind of walk off to the right. Uh, there are certainly smoother uh, LMGs out there, especially nowadays, but you have to really give it to them for what it was at the time. The uh, trigger is actually pretty good. So we'll go ahead and we'll, uh, for the first time ever on Grantham, we'll go ahead and we'll ghost that trigger together. Check that stuff out. All right. So if you guys want to come up and take a look at this guy. So we have the RPD trigger right here. So feeling into it. We are just there. We just got to give it a little go. A little bit of play. There we go. We got about the four millimeters of play. Very light though. We have our let off now. Of course, if we hold that to the rear, 
that guy is just coming straight forward for no particular reason that we're gonna talk about right now. A couple other things to look at is, of course, the grip angle. Um, I've always loved the Soviet grip angles. This guy's a little loose right now. I've been firing it quite a bit. But it's near vertical, and of course nowadays this is normal. Uh, back in the day, not so much for a lot of the weapons that we had. The stock is simple, but it's very effective for MG work. So you have this little scoop right here, however you wanna hold it. There's a lot of different methods when it comes to your LMGs. But uh, it is a simple, reliable, and robust LMG. And it's one that you see used still today, despite the fact that it's been technically replaced by the RPK. Despite that, you have many, many nations that still use it. Nations that can't buy more modern LMGs are still rocking this with very good effect. Now, there are models out there that do have a side rail on them, and that's for mounting of night vision. Of course, it'd be easy to mount up some type of optic mounting system there as they're very similar and uh, make this a much more effective platform. And again, if you're unclear about it, it is chambered in 7.62 by 39, so there's a lot of round commonality. So in every way, this was the precursor to what we see nowadays. Um, we owe a lot to the RPD, to a lot of the concepts that pioneered. It didn't get everything right, but at the same time, uh, a very simple, a very effective, and a very reliable LMG, which are all things that you want when it comes to it. So the best part about these RPDs is what, Micah? The vibe? The price. Oh, that too. Sorry. The yeah, the, the vibe, the vibe. These part kits are very, very cheap to get a hold of. To build these weapons, is, even in semi-auto, is fairly cheap. Um, RPK it, price. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is it, like 1500 five, five grand for a total build? For a total build for a belt fed. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty awesome. So they are simple to build, they are simple to, to get your hands on, and uh, they're awesome. They're well made. I really don't have a whole lot of bad things to say about the RPD. Obviously it is outdated, it's not obsolete, but it is certainly obsolescent in many ways. In any case, if you have one of these and you're super sad because you don't have the most brand new LMG out there, don't be sad. This thing absolutely rocks, and what's gonna matter more than the LMG is gonna be your training. I'd be terrified if somebody was trained with that. Oh my God, yeah. Real talk. I do not want uh, to be on the other side of this guy. These are awesome. Get training out there, guys. Uh, LMG training is very specific, so it's going to be something that's a little bit harder to get. Lots of great military manuals out there to help you understand what you should be doing with these. Get that training. Become good with them. You are what matters, not so much the weapon, so long as it is well-made and reliable. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you so much. And uh, we got nothing else for you. Micah, do we have anything else for them? Yes. Oh, what? Uh, we're going to figure that out. It was dad advice. Oh, dad advice. Um, dad advice, guys. It's a simple one, but uh, did you know that your body just functions better when you drink more water? Uh, it's highly advised to be hydrated. Uh, you're going to feel better. You're going to pee clear. Again, you can overhydrate, but the point is, it should be like a nice light lemonade color. And you're gonna feel much better about yourself, especially for those of you who are out there running and you should be getting outside and running. So if there's a, a piece of advice I could give you today, it's drink water. Or don't, put liquid IV in one water bottle and call it a day. Don't do that.